Shalom Havarim. Welcome, friends in Hebrew. My name is Tony Pino, and today I'm going to be sharing on what is titled, What is the Difference Between the Law of Moshe and the Law of Mashiach, or many say the Law of Christ? This question often comes up because people will sometimes say, I don't follow the Law of Moshe, I follow the Law of Christ. And they're trying to pit a difference between the two as if the two are contradictory to one another. Um, I've had some people say, well, you go ahead and follow the law of Moshe. I will follow the law of Yeshua. I'll follow the law of Jesus. You know, you do the, the law stuff and see how, you know, well, you can earn your salvation. I'm going to follow, you know, Yeshua because he teaches us how to love. It's all about love is what they'll tell me. So what I would like to do is clear up the misconception because actually uh, what they are doing is contradictory to the word. So I want to go ahead and begin. We'll go uh, look at the PowerPoint here, and I will show you that the two do not contradict one another. They actually complement one another. Amen. So let's go ahead and go to the PowerPoint. All right. So again, the title is, what is the difference between the law of Moshe and the law of Mashiach or the law of Christ? So what is the law of Moshe? The law of Moshe is the law of Yahweh, or yud heh wow heh given by the Father, Son, and Spirit on Sinai, okay? Yeshua was there giving the Torah to the nation of Israel. The Father was there. The Spirit was there. And again, when we say law of Moshe, it is the law of Yahweh. So on one hand, it is the law of Mashiach, right? Because he's the one giving it. It's his law. Right? It is a wedding covenant agreement between the parties involved, which were both Israelites and Gentiles, making up the nation of Israel. We see this in Shemot chapter 12, verse 37 through 38, because we have both Gentiles and Jews leaving together by faith, receiving grace, and they are following Moshe by faith all the way to Mount Sinai. So at Mount Sinai, you have two people groups making up the nation of Israel. Why are the Gentiles even there? Well, you're going to find that many of them are going to want to stick around because they want to serve the God of Abraham. So they want to dwell with Israel, become a part of the covenants. Okay, I'm not saying every single one of them did that, but that's the purpose on why many of them are there. They're forsaking the pagan gods and wanting to serve the God of Abraham. So they're entering into a covenant with Israel. They're becoming part of Israel. It's, it's a foreshadow of the grafting in of, of Gentiles into the nation of Israel to be a part of her covenants, her promises. Amen. So no. When people say, well, the law of Moshe was given to Jews, you know, and I'm a Gentile. So that's a misnomer. It was given to Gentiles, too. This is why throughout the Torah, it will say one law is for the native as well as the foreigner who dwells among you. You'll see this periodically throughout the Torah, and that is because you have Gentiles that want to dwell with Israel. That's exactly what you and I are doing. If we are Gentiles, if you're a Gentile like me, we are part of Israel's covenants. We are dwelling with her in the covenant relationship she has with Yeshua, with Yahweh. And so there is one law, both for all of us. It's one kingdom. It's one savior, one set of laws to live in his kingdom. Now, in Shemot 19.6, it states, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. Okay. But again, Gentiles are there. It doesn't exclude Gentiles. It does include Gentiles. All right. This is Yahweh speaking. This is his heart's desire that both Gentile and Jews would be a part of his covenant relationship. They, they would become the bride. Amen. And you do that through coming through Israel. She is the one with the covenants. Now, even Peter makes the same statement in 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So does this involve Gentiles? Absolutely. All right. It's a repeat of what is happening at Mount Sinai. Okay. 
And so, yes, it includes Gentiles. We are all under one kingdom. We are all under one king. We are all under one set of laws. Remember, the law is the marriage covenant. You can't break that up into parts, a marriage covenant. You can't say, well, I'm going to do the ceremonial. Uh, I'm not going to do the ceremonial or the civil. I just want the moral. That is a total man-made tradition. Nowhere within Judaism of the first century or prior did they break up the, the uh, covenant in that way. Okay, you're just cherry picking when you do that. So no, uh, the covenant is one marriage covenant to all. So we have to be very careful because we could rightfully say that you're nullifying God's word for your tradition. Well, I'm just going to follow the moral law. I'm not under civil or ceremonial. Who divided it up in that way? Man did, not God. God didn't divide it up that way. When you look at everything that man places under the civil category, under the ceremonial category, under the moral category, that's man making that decision, not Yahweh not Yeshua. Amen. All right, let's move on. So in Yermeyahu, we can see this further established uh, as he talks about the new covenant that's coming. So it says, behold, days are coming. It is a declaration of Yahweh. Now, this is Yermeyahu, Jeremiah 31, verses 30 to 34. So he says, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. You see, you can't say, well, you know, Sinai covenant, oh, that was with the Jews, not Gentiles. If you want to stand firm on that, then we can easily say that the new covenant is made with the Jews or the house of Israel and not Gentiles, okay? Both allowed Gentiles to come in. Both are for all nations. Israel was to be a light to the nations. They weren't supposed to hoard their covenant relationship with Yahweh. They were supposed to share it. Okay, they were supposed to be a light to the nations. And so the new covenant is the same way. It is made to Israel. Israel is the bride, not something called the church. Okay, Israel is the bride. It's plain and simple right here. He's not switching brides. He's keeping the same bride. So again, not like the covenant I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. It is a declaration of Yahweh. So we do have one covenant being made in the flesh, and they broke it. The sin of the golden calf, they broke it. Now we have one being made in the spirit. Okay, Does that change the laws? Do the laws change? Let's find out. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. It is a declaration of Yahweh. I will put my Torah within them. Yes, I will write it on their heart. I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. Okay. Again, to the house of Israel, he's taking the two, making them one. House of Israel, house of Judah. They are now house of Israel. Amen. He's making them one doesn't say anything about Gentiles or a covenant or a separate thing called the church. No, it's a relationship through Israel. And Gentiles are included. They are going to be grafted in. This is why we talk about Romans chapter 11. So we're just getting our biblical uh, parameters correctly. We're, we're being consistent. Okay. So the Torah is being written on your heart. What Torah? The law of Moshe is being written on your heart. Why is that? Why is it going to be supernaturally written on your heart? We're going to find out here real quickly. We have Yeshua coming to the earth. All right. So Yeshua states, and this will help explain what the law of Mashiach is. The law of Mashiach or the law of Messiah. Yeshua says in uh, Yochanan 13, verses 34 through 35, Yeshua says, I give you a new covenant that the one I'm sorry, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So also you must love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. See, this is where people kind of get in and they'll say, see, I'm not going to do the law of Moses. Moshe, I'm going to what follow Yeshua. He gave us a new commandment and it's just about love. So we just have to love. Yes, but who defines love? Well, Yeshua defined love, but how did he define it? Through the law of Moshe. You can't split the two up. The one complements the other. There's something that has happened here that has never happened before, which is why it's a new covenant. 
Yes, it's not a renewed covenant. I don't hold that it's a renewed covenant. It's a brand new covenant because never before has Yahweh come in human flesh and dwelt amongst us. And so Yeshua is the living, breathing word of God. Okay, so he is even greater than the law of Moshe because the law of Moshe was written on tablets and scrolls, but he is the living word. He is the living Torah in that sense. He is the living instructions of Yahweh. He taught us how to keep Torah. He said to keep his yoke for his yoke is light. The yoke of the Pharisees, the perishim was heavy. They had added man's traditional laws on there. They had traditions of men added on there and said, this is how you are to follow Yahweh. This keeps you in the covenant. This is how you serve him. And Yeshua came against certain ones, not all of them, but certain ones. So he gives you the new commandment. Does the new commandment abolish the law of Moshe? Absolutely not. It just shows you how to do it, how to keep Sabbath how to uh, rightfully keep the kosher laws, how to keep the feast days, how to love your neighbor, how to love Yahweh. Amen. He is not contradicting the greatest commandments that are found in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5, to love Yahweh with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and Leviticus 19, 18, to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeshua is the living word showing you exactly how to fulfill those commands. So the law of Mashiach, the law of Messiah, this new commandment is not something that replaces the law of Moshe. It actually brings the law of Moshe up to its proper true intent. It's the intent from which the law of Moshe wanted you to be like, to live, because we are the image of Yahweh. We are to reflect his character. And that's what Yeshua did perfectly, sinlessly. Amen. So when looking at the law of Moshe, I'm sorry, the law of Mashiach or the law of Christ, oftentimes people will try and take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and basically verse 21, because in the English here, you can see it says under the law of Christ in verse 21. And we're going to find out that that's not a correct rendering of the Greek. But let's go ahead and get the context here first. So Paul is speaking. He says, for though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. Okay. This is nothing more than when he's evangelizing and he's coming with a message, he knows his audience. So he adapts the gospel message to his audience. He knows how to speak to them. Okay. So to the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law though not myself under the law. Okay, so what does he mean by this? Well, Jews are what walking in the law of Moshe, all right? And so they're under the law, and they're also under the penalty of the law, too. It's a twofold event here. So he knows how to speak to them. He knows they know the Torah in depth. So he can show them where they are sinners and how they are not set free from the penalty of the laws they've been breaking. He can speak to them in a way because they know the Torah in a way that Gentiles don't. So this is just an evangelist and how he brings the message. Okay, And he can let them know it's not that he doesn't follow Torah anymore, but he's not under its penalty because Yeshua has set him free. The blood of Yeshua has paid the penalty for his sins. But the freedom of grace doesn't give you permission to sin. And he will also teach them about that. So he's not telling them to no longer keep the Torah, but he's telling them how they can be set free from their penalties through the blood of Yeshua. All right, so let's go on. That I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, meaning Gentiles, I became as one outside the law. Okay, Not being outside the law of God. In other words, he's not going to tell them not to keep Torah. Because it is Torah that's teaching them where their sins are. He's going to show them in the law of Moshe, this is what makes you a sinner as a Gentile. These are the laws you've been breaking. And he can teach them in a way they understand. He's an evangelist. He's bringing the message. He's bringing it at a level that they can understand. So it's not outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ. Okay, He can use Yeshua as the perfect example on how God loves them, 
God died for them. He's serving them. He wants them to repent. The all right, how uh, Yeshua taught the Torah, lived the Torah, and these are the things they're breaking. So they need his uh, his offering to pay for their sins and so forth. So, but the problem also is is law of Christ is not correct here, and I'll show you the better meaning of what is trying to be said by Paul. So in the Greek here, we can see in verse 21, it says to those outside the law, like one outside the law, not being outside of the law of God, but under the law of Christ or under the law to Christ, so that I may win. He's going to say win those. But the term en namos here, en namos, go ahead and study it out. It means within the law to Christ, within the law to Christ. That's why he said not outside the law, okay? He's showing them that they are lawbreakers. How does he show them that? The law of Moshe. And then he shows them how they need to be in Christ. They need to be in Yeshua. He needs to, what, save them from their sins, not so that they can go around breaking the law of Yahweh, which is the law of Moshe. No, he's also going to teach him how to keep the law of Moshe. So this is not contradictory to the law of Moshe. It actually helps support that, number one, the law of Moshe is still valid because it's telling you what sin is and how much you need Yeshua. And once you receive Yeshua and he, what, frees you from your debt, that doesn't give you permission to break the law of Moshe because Yeshua never broke the law of Moshe. He never taught you to break the law of Moshe. So following Yeshua is not abandoning the law of Moshe. It's just coming to him when you sin and using his offering as your payment, repenting to him, turning to him, all right? Learning how to love as he loved others. That's the key, okay? So really in reality, this is not supposed to be law of Christ. It's supposed to be the law within Christ or within the law to Christ, I should say. That's the better way to say it. Okay. So to those outside the law, verse 21, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but within the law to Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. That's speaking of Gentiles. They do not have the knowledge of Torah like the Jews do. So he preached the gospel message in a way they would understand, okay? I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. So no, Paul wasn't eating pork with the Gentiles and not eating pork with the Jews. Paul was like, you know, he's not, not keeping Shabbat with the Gentiles, but keeping Shabbat with the Jews. This is how it's often translated, which is wrong. It's not part of the context, okay? It's not part of the words of Yeshua or the words of Paul. It's all about preaching the gospel message in a way people understand. All right, let's move on to the only place where we actually see the term law of Christ. And that is in Galatians 6, 1 through 3. Galatians 6, 1 through 3 is where you're going to see the law of Moshe or the law of Messiah, the law of Christ. It's the only place in the Bible you're going to see this term used. So in verse 1 of Galatians 6, it states, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. How do you know he broke a, broke a law? How do you know he did a transgression? The law of Moshe tells you. Okay. Now you're supposed to restore him in a spirit of gentleness. This is what Yeshua did. This is what Yeshua tried to do, right? It says, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. You might be tempted to break the law of Moshe, all right? So bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What was the biggest thing that Yeshua taught us? Love your neighbor as yourself. Treat your neighbor as you would want to be treated. Is that outside the law of Moshe? No, absolutely not. That is within the law of Moshe. So as we can see here, in the Greek, starting with verse 2 of Galatians, 
right? One another's burdens bear you, and thus you shall fulfill the law of Christ, all right? Namon ho Christo. Namo ho Christo, the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Following the Torah in the way Yeshua did. It's not disregarding the Torah. It's not forsaking the Torah, because if you forsake the Torah, you sin. Yeshua never sinned. He never taught you how to sin. So his law on how to love is how he interpreted the Torah and how he kept the Torah. He didn't put a heavy weight on people like the Parashim did. Okay, His what yoke was light, but it wasn't not a yoke, right? It still was a yoke. It still was the law of Moshe. So no, Yeshua would never teach people to not do Sabbath, to not keep kosher, to not keep the feast days, to not love your neighbor as yourself, to not love Yahweh and keep all his commands. Now, I do want to make something clear. I, for one, believe that within Western Christianity, there are many that do keep the Torah, not the whole of Torah as they should, but they keep what is called the heavy commandments. All right, so I do definitely hold that there are Christians, Western Christians, that are keeping the heavy commandments of the Torah. They are loving their neighbor. They are feeding the poor. They are loving the elderly. Uh, they're taking care of, uh, you know, the needy, and they are people of integrity. They do fair business deals. Uh, you can trust them, so forth. These are all following Torah commands, okay? They are forsaking some of the other commands. And so in those areas, yes, that's a sin. But I do want to make it clear that I do believe in Western Christianity, they are following many Torah commands. So, um, but they are misinterpreting scripture at times and misrepresenting Paul and what he is saying. And so a lot has to do with their church doctrine and so forth. But I don't say that to say that they're out of the kingdom. I don't say that Western Christians are outside the kingdom. Okay, they do have a misunderstanding of what Torah is and how it relates and what Yeshua did and how it's not abolished. But I, for one, do not sit here and try and say that Western Christians aren't saved and so forth. No, there are many heavy commandments that they follow and oftentimes follow better than others. So, but I did want to clear up the misconception that is happening. So what is the difference between the law of Moshe and the law of Mashiach? Well, the difference is the law of Mashiach, Yeshua, is the living, breathing example on how to keep the law of Moshe. All right. And he did fulfill the offering system in the sense that he is the once and for all offering for sin. Okay. But because not every jot and tittle of the Torah has passed away yet or been fulfilled by Yeshua because he has a second coming. We will see animal offerings done in the millennial reign, all right? When Yeshua returns, there will be animal offerings until all is fulfilled. This doesn't take away from his offering. This doesn't mean we're trusting in those offerings for salvation, okay? It's just following the word of Yahweh. It points you to Yeshua. Yeshua is my once and for all offering. Every time I sin, I go to Yeshua, all right? But how do I know what sin is? The law of Moshe tells me what sin is. Then I know what to repent from. Amen. So I hope this was helpful to you. I tried to make it short, but I know it did kind of probably go a little bit long, but I wanted to be thorough um, and I could have added so much more, but I feel that it was adequate for what we are talking about. So I hope this was a blessing to you. And until we meet again, everyone, shalom.